Hello and welcome to the My Kitchen Rules Digital After Show. My name is Danny Painter. And every week straight after the My Kitchen Rules official show on Mnet, you can join me on the socials, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, wherever you consume your social media, we'll be there. Follow us using the hashtag, hashtag MKRSA. And like I said, you can join us straight after where we spill the tea. We find out about things that maybe didn't make the cut in the actual show. And we find out about what the judges really, really thought of the movie. I thought the presentation of the, the Borek was lovely. I did love the play of the goat cheese with Alva. The savory with that, with that beautiful sweet is a, really is a match made in heaven. It's, yeah. This week in the fourth instant restaurant in this group of contestants, we meet Kirsten and Dietlev. From the Far East, from the Vale, I'm from Brackpan. You're currently in my house in Brackpan, but I can tell you something. I cannot make a dessert to save my life. And this dessert was everything. Now, we've watched the episode. We already know what went down. But let's chat to Kirsten and Dietlef about what went down, maybe behind the scenes. So on a Zoom with me, from the veil to the pan, because this kitchen is in Brack Pan, I'm um, Kirsten and Dietlef. Guys, hello. Welcome. Hi, hello, hello. Danny. Hi. <laughs> One of the best instant restaurants we've seen yet. And I've got to tell you guys, every single person in your group that I've chatted to so far, when I've said to them, who's the dark horse of the group? Who should we be keeping an eye on? They've said you two. Every single person. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure if I should be worried about that or not. So if it's a compliment. <laughs> Okay, so talk to me a little bit. I've just, I followed you guys on Instagram and I saw the video that you made, Kristen, when you said, I'm going to ask my dad to enter this cooking competition for a million rand. How was that conversation and why on earth would you say yes, Dedlov? Like, why? <laughs> <laughs> um, my dad happened to be in Namibia at the time on a trip and I saw that auditions were open. And um, I, I sent him an email because that was the only way to get a hold of him. And I was like, Dad, please, like in capital letters, can we enter this? Um, we're good cooks. I know we can have our fun. It's our thing. And he just said, sure. <laughs> you always have to say sure. <laughs> the food dream would be to actually continue on my grandmother's autobiography, Sauerkraut and Turkish Delight. I thank you for sharing all of your cooking knowledge with him and bringing us all the way here today. Who said that? <laughs> I love you. You look like you guys had a good time and you guys were really nice to each other in the kitchen. If it was my dad and I, firstly, my dad can't cook. He can't even boil it. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Chuck. But um, it would never it would never work because I would just get frustrated. And I think it's worse when it's family because you don't have to be nice to each other. But you guys but, were really uh, nice. Uh, but I think what makes a difference as well is, you know, a lot of people, you, you sort of cook together as friends or whatever. But, I mean, we, we cook together. So, we know, sometimes when things haven't worked out and we, we say it goes, you know, when a meal's bad, you say it's bad. You learn very quickly. Don't do that again. <laughs> so, the, the advantage was that we have do cook together. And, obviously, I think with our five Ps, we practiced a bit. <laughs> the five Ps. Remind us what the five Ps are because we need these. Proper preparation prevents poor performance. Proper preparation prevents poor performance. I'm not surprised that Kirsten and Dietlef have rehearsed everything to a T. Let's go. We watched the episode. We didn't see the chefs coming into your kitchen, but I know across some of the other episodes, even if we haven't seen it, when something's been late or when something's been going wrong, a David will walk into the kitchen and be like, guys, what's going on? Were there any of those moments behind the scenes that we didn't get to see? Oh yeah, there were, and it's a oh. definite caught off guard. Like, oh my gosh, what are you doing here? Is it to tell me to hurry up? Is it because you're concerned about like what we're gonna cook? You know, you never know what to expect. It's rich. It's a dessert that I would like pay too much money for, and like sit at a really nice place for. Maybe I just started eating this thing correctly because the sweetness only got to me at the end after the ice cream was finished. But I still couldn't stop eating it. At least I've seen for this thing, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that dessert went down. Everyone was stoked about that dessert. And I feel like everyone is going to be asking you for the recipe for that halva ice cream. It looked phenomenal. And also, if I remember correctly, it's the first good ice cream we've had this whole season. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well done, guys. <laughs> it was definitely a goal of mine to, like, hit a home run with the dessert. Like, for me, all I wanted was great feedback on the dessert. 
um, especially because it was largely like my little baby. Mm. Actually, when I entered, I said to Kirsten, I said, we can do anything but dessert her, 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 her cake. There were a lot of stuff we, we can cook, we can back each other up and we can do the yeah. dishes together. But I said, dessert, you all, you've got to handle it and I won't be able to help you. You know, you got to, you got to, you got to pick up that ball and run with it. So the credit goes to her on those. <laughs> well, you nailed it, Kirsten. You absolutely. Even I'm, I'm not a dessert person. I wanted it. I oh, no. wanted it bad. I'm coming to the. Don't buy it. I think it was really good too. <laughs> <laughs> You're allowed to say that. You are allowed to say that. In, in fact, you know, when we when we were rolling those barracks bar and you realize, you know, when they, they say to you, you only you only going to host one Eastern restaurant in your life. And right at the end, when everything had, I mean, it was, we knew everything had gone fairly smoothly, um, you know, so we could relax and just concentrate. And, and we were rolling those barracks up and I said to you, you realize this is the end and we just we actually don't want it to end. Eh? You know, we were like, you know, quite a nice space. We were sort of standing next to each other, rolling. The, it worked out. I think it was, I think we worked out it was a minute and a half to roll each, or two minutes to roll each barrack. Oh, yes, so we knew said... it was going to take 20 minutes to roll and then put them in the oven. So we knew it was going to be like 35 or 40 minutes till we could serve. And, yeah, and no, then we, we had a lot of, I think like I, my dad and I get along. I, I know this. We work together. It goes, we go well at work. And the kitchen was sort of new territory, especially with the pressure. And we had so much fun and I, like when it was coming to rolling those barrack in the end and like oh it's, this is over you know like we we both had an absolute blast i'm really proud of my dad and i'm glad that we chose to do this adventure together thank you good luck for the rest of the competition hopefully thank you. we'll speak again kristen and didlip thank you for your time thanks well, thank, Danny. thank you and there you go, one more instant restaurant to go next week. Someone is going home. Who do you think it's going to be? Also, after next week, what's going to happen? What do you think? Let's have a conversation. You can leave me a comment underneath or you can just use the hashtag. Hashtag MKRSA. Who's going home next week? I hope it's not who I think it is, but I think it might be. If you tell me, MKRSA, use that hashtag, follow us everywhere, and I'll be back next week for our very, very last instant restaurant.